showing up when it's time to pick it. But sometimes we're called to sow the seed, water the seed, do some other things to prepare for that day. You never know. So what we know is that most people come to Christ by the time they're 25 years old, before that time. And so reaching young people and students is a very, very important part and strategic part of, salva- uh, of the gospel being spread. And we just happen to have a young man. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> he didn't sit in the same seat. I was like, Tommy? And anyway, Tommy Saunders is, uh, some of you have gotten a chance to know him, but he's a, a, a missionary to campuses here in North Carolina. So I've invited him to come on up here. Have a seat, buddy. Tommy, I gave a little bit of introduction, but tell us, um, you know, what is it that you do and who do you primarily minister to? Okay, I, I just want to say real quick that I know the analogy sometimes is given, uh, you know, someone that shares the gospel and a salesman. Salesmen are looking to get something from you and convince you that you need something that you probably don't need. And no <laughs> offense uh, to, to any salesman here. But uh, Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned. Yeah. Everybody has the problem of sin. Everybody needs a savior. So and they I'm, all need that vacuum cleaner, don't they, buddy? No, I'm no, <laughs> no um, but it's true. So, so, and I'm not looking for any anything from somebody when I share the gospel with them. I'm trying to give them eternal life. Um, so yeah, I have, God's using me right now on the campus at NC State, internationally and in other countries and uh, abroad, like that is abroad, but um, and beyond. Um, NC State is 119 countries that come to the campus, and I shared this at the first service. It's tough. But the leading cause of death but for individu- individuals between the age of 18 and 25 is suicide. And I have four this past year that personally affected me. My roommate, somebody who's a part of the church, and then two people out on campus. And um, every year, over 1,000 occur on the university's campuses. If you need anything to get out, you know, speak to people. Um, I know that's the campus. That doesn't just happen on the campus. You know, that's, that's all over the world. There's a lot of brokenness. And um, so, yeah, the college campus, Amen. but beyond. So since the ATK, because we had you come at our Advance of Kingdom celebration uh, yeah. a little over a year ago, and during that time, you were sharing about, you know, you reaching and specifically targeting universities and, uh, and NC State. And you got a couple of testimonies that I wanted you to share today. Could you do that? Just kind of share oh, yeah. some things that God has done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you guys probably didn't know that you had a celebrity uh, in your midst. but Now, I'm not a celebrity, but I was on the front page of Fox News. And um, NC State spoke to our group. They stopped me multiple times and told us that we weren't allowed to share our religious agenda, the gospel. And they had policies that were set up that limited the First Amendment right that we all have to share the gospel, to speak, just talk to people. They were so ambiguous that they could pick and choose what you could talk about. We didn't look, you know, for a fight. They, they came to us. And um, anyway, our lawyers, we sought counsel, and the lawyers said, you know, you need to pursue this. This is a lot bigger than just you guys, you know, NC State. This is the rights of students all over the nation. And um, so I went to court this past May. Um, I was in the Dominican Republic, and the pastor there said, how's the case going? And I said, you know about the case? He said, yes. Yeah. So, Anyway, um, we ended up winning that case. God allowed us to win that case, and that gave back the rights that students should have had to begin with on the college campus to share openly so they can't And that and wasn't choose. just you. who You weren't a student at NC no, State. I had, I had graduated, but I was with a student yeah. while we were sharing. So it, the real issue was the, the freedom of the students themselves oh, yeah. to be able to share the gospel. They were trying to take that away. Yeah, they, they were basically saying, you know, you can't talk about this, your dorm, no matter where you are. So I had to ask the guy when he stopped me. He said, I said, you mean I can't talk to my friends even? And he said, you know, no, you need to check the policies. So. Wow. But you won the oh, yeah. case. Oh, yeah. And so now you're, you're free within some... With yeah, it's still a there. random person just can't come and start talking on campus. You've got to be with the student, but at least the students, you know, have the right yeah. uh, to share. And then you had a picture of somebody that you wanted yeah, to Yeah, this one is, a, uh, is another one. Um, God has used me in the past year to see four people baptized and 51 people come to Christ. And um, this group here is our group that went back um, this, this December to our, our annual winter conference And I'm not going to be able to point her out in here, but there's a girl by the name of Chen Chen. She's a Chinese master student at State that we met, and she said, I've got 
uh, um, uh, Chinese Christian friends. She's not a Christian yet. She said, but I want American Christian friends. I said, all right, well, <laughs> here we are. And um, anyway, at this conference, she came to this. Uh, she trusts us enough to come to this, and uh, she learned how to pray, just to what it's like to talk to God. And this is our tie-down time at the end of the conference, and she got up and spoke. And she said, in my culture in China, eternity doesn't exist. And I know eternity is real. And I want to spend the rest of my life with this community of people, you guys. Mm, That's awesome. So, um, you know, today the message is about opening our hearts to the lost, Tommy. And I've known you for a good while. And I knew you before this was really... So, I I mean, matter of fact, when I met you and saw your heart for evangelism and your heart for reaching students, I was blown away. So can you tell us just real briefly, um, how did you get there, Tommy? What, What happened? Yeah, um, I, t- I tell people, if you know me, you knew me, um, I'm just as surprised that I'm doing uh, what I am as anybody else is. And uh, my grandma said she saw a video of me in uh, January, and she said, I thought he was shy. Yeah, <laughs> I am shy. But um, God put me in positions. I did take steps of faith. If you think about it, we're following the example of a man that, hum- you know, God humbled himself to come to earth, and then he was murdered on a cross that's not a life of comfort, right. um, and that's, that's, he wants us to step out. So anyway, I, I got to be, God put me in a community of people that were passionate about sharing the gospel. Um, the people were just consistently there in the congregation sharing the gospel, and I knew I needed to do that, but I had people around me that were pulling me out. I dreaded it. I just did not want to get out and talk to somebody, nervous, introvert, name everything. You know, I just didn't want to talk to people. And what are the two things you don't talk about? Religion and politics, and I mean, um, so, yeah, God just, he put me in the position, he put me around people that were passionate about it, and he put some key verses um, that stand out to me. Philemon 1.6 says that, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith for the furtherance and understanding of all the good things that you have in Christ Jesus, Mm. and God, God can use a rock. He doesn't need us. He wants to bless us by meeting new people. Some of my best friends right now, I wouldn't have known them if I hadn't responded to God or I wouldn't have been out sharing the gospel. You meet people, you know, you, you yeah. live your life, you multiply your life. It's true. So you were around a culture of a number of people that there was really just a whole group of people, 80% of that local church you're in, that were actively sharing their, their faith. And would you say 90% of most Christians never do? Yeah, and I, I mentioned that in the second service. I didn't mention George Barna does polls on Christianity with just a lot of things, but statistics on them. He says that actually 98% of Christians oh. don't share their faith, wow. meaning initiate with others and you know attempt to share the gospel or share what they believe. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So you being around other believers who were affected you, and then a, a leader, a mentor, yeah. a man that really began to kind of teach you. You watched him, what he was doing. And that's really was Jesus' example. You know that? Jesus did the same thing. He got the 12, showed them how to do it, then turned them loose to do it themselves. So that's pretty cool. Well, Tommy, thank you for being here, and I'm very grateful, yeah, that you you can't come, and people can talk to you after the service is over about the ministry you do. And uh, so I'm I'm really excited for you and proud of you, what you do, buddy, there. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.